Our next guest was a director of a Planned Parenthood clinic and has since changed her stance on the issue of abortion. Abby Johnson is on the road, but we wanted to get her thoughts during the significant moment in history for the pro-life movement. Abby, what's the feeling right now in the pro-life community based on how this leak is playing out? You know, I think that there's, of course, a lot of optimism right now because of the draft opinion that was released, but also a feeling of a little a little worry. Um, you know, this this leak is not something that that we wanted. Um, it, it's it's not the appropriate way to to find something like this out. We wanted just the court opinion to come out in the way that it should have. Um, so I think that there's a, a bit of, of worry about what this is going to do, which is, of course, why it was leaked in the first place to cause upheaval and um, in the court and in the American public. So, um, you know, now we have congressional members, you know, calling for, uh, you know, Congress to codify Roe, calling for court packing. Um among other things. And so, you know, I think there's a bit of worry, you know, what are the justices going to do? Are they still going to wait until June? Are they going to come out with this earlier, uh, come out with their opinion earlier? So now everything feels a little uncertain. So it certainly sounds like there's a bit of cautious uh, optimism there. Um, If, in fact, the uh, leaked decision does stand, uh, I just want to get your thoughts on where you think the pro-life movement's uh, battle will go from here? Well, certainly, you know, the the battle for the past 50 years has been one battle. So, you know, the battle has been at the Supreme Court. Now we're looking at even a, a bigger battle because now we're looking at a, a battle of 50 battles, really, um, each state battle. And so now we're, we're looking at something even bigger, a bigger undertaking. Um, and so we'll have, you know, some states that are, you know, looking to codify Roe, that are looking to expand abortion access as we know it. And then you're going to have states that swing, you know, the pendulum far to the right. And and so then you're going to have some that are, you know, protecting the preborn at the moment of conception. And so it looks like it's going to be, you know, far blue or it's going to be far red. Um, and, and so I, I don't know that there's going to be much, much middle ground there. Um, and so pro, the pro-life movement is going to really have to, um, you know, start activating uh, around, you know, pregnancy centers and legal protections for the preborn at a state level. A question I like to ask anyone when talking about this issue, especially, you know, at this critical moment, is, uh, is abortion illegal? If you watch some other networks, you, you would think that there's some draconian measure that's just been handed down. What are your, what's your take? I mean, right now, we're, right now, everything is as it was just, you know, two days ago. So nothing has changed. Um, you know, we're just, if, if Roe is overturned, Right now, everything kicks back to the states, which is where it should have been from the beginning. The states have a right to make laws depending on the will of the people in that state. And so, you know, we're not talking about abortion being illegal in every state across the country. So um, actually, it would be about 26 states where abortion would be illegal affecting approximately 40% of women in childbearing age. So um, the majority of women in the country would still have access to legal abortion. That, of course, could change depending on states and and what they decide to do. Um, You know, and so states would have to make that decision, but the majority of women still would have access to legal abortion. And uh, then, you know, activists at that state level would have to fight it out. Abby Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, thank you. And how are lawmakers reacting to the unprecedented leak? And what does it mean to the Supreme Court's ability to do its job? And today's Iris Tao brings us more. Contrasting reactions from the two sides of the aisle. Democrats have overwhelmingly focused on the substance of the draft ruling, which says to overturn the landmark abortion case Roe v. Wade, instead of focusing on the leak itself. I don't know who leaked the opinion or why, but I know that today 
Women and men across this country are grappling with the very real concern and, yes, the fear that they may lose a critical constitutional right in just a matter of weeks. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer also decried the draft ruling while pivoting to the upcoming elections. The rights of 100 million women are now on the ballot. Meanwhile, whoever did this leak should be prosecuted and should go to jail for a very long time. Republicans, on the other hand, are demanding a full investigation into the leak, which they're calling the ethical violation, very potentially the legal violation. Unprecedented. As despicable as it is dangerous. This, as the Senate Minority Leader says, the leak is an intentional effort. To stir up an inappropriate pressure campaign to sway an outcome. Senators from two parties clashed in a Tuesday hearing on judicial ethics, which coincided with the Supreme Court incident. Senator John Kennedy noted that only a very finite group of people could have had access to the leaked document, and such individuals should all get a visit by the FBI. Either tell the truth or lie to an FBI agent, which subjects them to criminal prosecution. But Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse questioned the FBI's involvement. Why FBI agents from the executive branch should be running around within the Supreme Court. And White House had this to say about Kennedy's call for the Justice Department to identify the leaker. <clears throat> and I guess we'll begin by trying to identify what law that person might have violated. Meanwhile, President Biden did not address the leak during his Tuesday remarks either, though he called for Congress to codify abortion rights. A U.S. Capitol Police officer discharged their firearm inside of a congressional office building. The officer was suspended right after the incident. The Capitol Police is investigating the case. This comes as there is a heightened level of security on Capitol Hill due to the fallout from the leaked decision from the Supreme Court. Secretary of State Antony Blinken recognized World Press Freedom Day at D.C.'s Foreign Press Center. Blinken emphasized the importance of independent media for democratic values. Free press is one of the most effective tools that we have for advancing human rights. Blinken first talked about journalists who died covering Ukraine, including Fox News journalist Benjamin Hall, who lost half of his leg, his other foot, and lost his vision in one of his eyes while covering the Russian invasion. He added that oppressive countries jail their own citizens, with China holding the largest number of reporters. Taiwanese reporter Stacey Su brought up Beijing's influence on Taiwanese media, such as pressuring companies not to advertise with those who criticize communist China. Blinken said that disinformation was part of the CCP's hybrid warfare. Uh, including cyber attacks. And these are designed to basically distort the information environment and democratic processes. Um, so we've partnered with Taiwanese authorities on this, civil society organizations, to support uh, independent fact-based journalism. Blinken said that the goal is to build societal resilience to misinformation and foreign interference. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis lashed out at Disney on Tuesday for profiting off of China while ignoring the CCP's human rights abuses. You know, Disney has done a lot to partner with the Chinese Communist Party and really uh, has made a fortune over there without raising a peep about any of their atrocities. Um, I think China is the number one geopolitical threat that this country faces. I think, you know, you've had the ruling elite in this country for decades have basically done all they can uh, to elevate China. And a lot of them made a fortune off it, but it's made our country weaker. Uh, Last year, Disney's streaming channel in Hong Kong removed an episode of The Simpsons because it mentions the CCP's Tiananmen Square massacre. The company also faced backlash two years ago for filming in Xinjiang, where the Uyghurs and other minorities are being detained in concentration camps. The FDA is choosing not to approve two cancer treatment drugs from two companies with close ties to China. The drugs were mostly tested in China during the trial period. The FDA responded to the drug makers saying that their China-based clinical trials did not represent the U.S. patient population and current U.S. medical practices. The decision came shortly after the agency declined to approve another drug from Eli Lilly and its Chinese partner. Eli Lilly's drug was only clinically tested inside of China.
The FDA's rejections are seen as a sign of an increasingly tough U.S. stance on China-based drug testing for the American market.